going to talk now to Matthew Easter from TrueTex, a school uniform manufacturer. And um, here's a coincidence: he went to Skinner's. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. You speak on behalf of the the School Wear Association, but Matthew, I understand you're not too happy with the figures we've been talking about this morning. The Children's Society, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the Children's Society figures, Anna. They, you know, this is a perennial thing with uniform. It comes out every summer, and uh, as uniform manufacturers, we get quite frustrated with it because. It, 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 there's often often charities and, and, and groups that are trying to detract from, from uniform or the idea of uniform try and f- create these enormous figures which which include everything and, and let's face it there is there is a, a, um, a there are a couple of points here you have to send your children to school in clothes so if you weren't putting them in uniform you'd have to put them in other clothes and if you weren't put them in, in school uniform which is designed to last uh, for the school year, as, as Ed said, rightly there, and I remember those blazers, uh, <laughs> blazers. Um, you know, mine did. Mine lasted several years. I, I, I can't remember whether I changed or not in my before I went into a suit. But you know, if you think about it, yes, it's that. Uh, it's that, and, and the Skinner's blazer is actually an expensive blazer by comparison. Our own research, uh, which was done with Oxford Brooks, uh, puts the average secondary school day day uniform at ninety three pounds. Um, so it's considerably less than the three hundred pounds. To be but, fair, but Matthew. Point, Sorry to interject there. Like people aren't, you, you sound very defensive. People aren't blaming the people who make the uniforms. I mean, it, you know, it's not your decision on what schools say is requisite for a pupil. You know, they could make you make anything they want, couldn't they? They could say, we'll have a trilby hat and you'd make it. It's not up to you. It's, it's, we're not blaming you. No, 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 no. I'm sorry if I sound defensive. It's just, it, it's a frustration because it, yeah. the, the numbers are often misleading. Um, and I think that's the point. We, we as an industry, we absolutely support that that the the uniform that schools schools um, uh, specify for children have got to, has got to be reasonable and sensible. And I think I think the point that Ed made is really is really important. One is that if it lasts, if you've got a blazer which lasts four years and it acts as a coat as well, um, it, it it really isn't an expensive garment over the over the time that you that you bought it for. Um, yes, there's an upfront cost, and we all get that, and it comes at the wrong time of year, at the end of the summer holidays, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But, but, but actually, the, the, the point is that uniform is made to last, and good uniform will last a child for a long time, a lot longer than a fashion garment um, uh, that, that you buy in the high street often at more expensive prices. It's an interesting point, but I think what a lot of people have been contacting the show this morning to say is they don't have any problems with school uniform. It's what I was discussing with Edward just now. It's the amount of branding that's necessary. You know, I can buy a grey V-neck jumper, but I need this specific one and that triples the price. Yeah, and, and again, it's the, 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 brand is, the branding, and, and this is a point I often make, the branding is not necessarily what makes it more expensive. Yes, there's a cost of putting a badge on a garment. But the point is that the school uniform items that have brands on tend to be made differently than ones you can get off the high street. They tend to be longer-lasting, more robust items. I mean, I, I'll give you an example. Our, our blazer that we make, we did, some, we did some comparison on stuff in the high street, and there's 100 different selling points. Uh, of where strengthening our blazer and, and construction of our blazer, there isn't in a, in a high street garment. And so it's designed to last longer. Yeah, but what, what if little Jimmy loses it, you know? <laughs> You've got to well, buy a new one, it's still expensive. The, 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 the loss of garments is, of course, people lose it. But, I mean, I've got two children in school and, and I don't think either might have lost anything as yet. So um, <laughs> They wouldn't dare with you as their dad. <laughs> <laughs> you get, you get it, you know, you put labels in it and it, in schools generally, if it gets lost, it's mostly at school and then it can get, be returned to the people if it's got their name tag on them. And of course, if it's a branded uniform with the school logo on it, then somebody's going to pick it up if Skinner's Skinner's blazer gets lost in town and it's got a name in it, probably somebody's going to return it to Skinner's. Yeah, I'll give you that one. Let me read you this from Cora, who says, over £100 for logoed items, exclamation mark. It should be made illegal for schools to have any school-specific items of clothing. Instead, uh, Cora says, have an iron-on patch or sash, etc., when it's needed. What do you make of that? Well, lots of schools actually offer it, offer that. I mean, they, they offer uh, an iron-on badge or a sew-on badge as an alternative to, the, to buying the logo garment. I have to say, I don't think that when you, by the time you add the logo and the, and the, you buy the, the product of the high street, it doesn't it doesn't become that much of, of a cheaper item up front. And indeed, what you're going to get probably is something that's not going to last as long. 
And so it's it's a it's about helping parents, I think, to plan for the cost of the uniform. Yes, it does come down at the start of the secondary school, particularly, it's a cost, and, and I don't think anybody would argue with that. But then, if you think about that over the life of the, of the pupil in the secondary school, it's not really a huge cost because the garments are, are last for several years, and because it's uniform, it doesn't need to change. Yeah, and I suppose that feeds back into what Ed was telling us about having a, a sort of second-hand store at the school. Well, it, that works, doesn't it? If the clothes are hard-wearing, they can go through several generations. Absolutely, and, and, and nothing gives me greater pleasure than seeing people um, use our garments uh, second and third time around because actually it, it fly, it, you know, uniform is absolutely the perfect thing for uh, against the fast fashion throwaway culture because it doesn't yes. change. Uh, it's actually, yeah. you know, we should be making long long-lasting, hard-wearing garments. But, you know, it's like anything, you know, buy once, buy right, you know, all those sort of adages, you know, quality quality lasts. And, yes, it might be a few more pounds exp- more expensive than buying it from a, from a, a high street store. But, actually, um, you know, it is the price of a couple of coffees difference for years' worth of use. It's a point that's come up before about the ecology, not one that I thought of. And um, the final point from you, Matthew, before I just need to check before you go. Um, Edward Weston wasn't the head teacher while you were at Skinner's, was he? No, no, he wasn't. No, I okay. met Ed, and, and I, live, <laughs> I live up in Yorkshire now, so I don't, I don't get down to Tunbridge Wells very often. You didn't call him sir, so I didn't think so. Uh, <laughs> lovely to talk to you this morning. <laughs> Thank you. That's Matthew Easter from Chutex talking about school uniform. He's a school uniform manufacturer, saying, well, actually, it's about how hard wearing the clothes are. So spend a few pounds now, save a few mm. down the line.